Welcome everybody to show eight of wine and uh, cheese. Um, Spot, has he settled down? He has. Last week we had a little bit of trouble with Spot and um, yeah. he's been having some therapy with our friend Yo and he's uh, learned the error of his ways and he's he's going to sit nicely now and just cooperate and from now on you reckon he'll be in the studio <laughs> oh dear <laughs> it, wa it wasn't pretty <laughs> it wasn't pretty lucky it rained a bit and uh over the last <laughs> week and, um, <laughs> we just washed it out the back door <laughs> <laughs> and uh the weather phil Phil, Man, the weather over the last week. It's like we had the Bureau of Meteorology put out a warning saying this was going to be the worst storm in 10 years. And it was pretty close. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Last Sunday, Monday. Actually, it was louder early Monday morning at my place than it was the rest of the time. I don't know what was going mm. on outside. I didn't want to go and have a look really, but... It wasn't it too was, bad at my place, but mm. it, it seemed to happen in pockets yeah. around Perth. Yeah, my pockets were full of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it was really bad down in the southwest, Margaret River. Um, oh, yes. Where Nikki and Jamie live. Um, Canal Rocks, wasn't it? That Canal uh, Rocks, all of that. Um, we've got a little bit of footage. So the, the first bit that you're going to see is the... Um, the Bureau's animation of a low coming down, a low coming up from Antarctica, the meeting and all the hell mm. that went loose. Yeah. And, and um, <clears throat> you'll see the weather area where it more affected the state more than anything. Um, mm. And you'll also see Cottesloe Beach, which has no beach anymore. The water came right in. The last in. time I remember that, I've Phil never was, seen that. Um, uh, Cyclone Albie. Yeah, right. Myself and two of my mates, for some reason, I mean, we were probably uh, 18 at the time, decided we were going to go fishing that night. <laughs> and um, <laughs> good old Jeff and um, Greg. And uh, we got to Floriot Beach and the, uh, what do you call it, surf club. The sand had been eaten away underneath it. So we pulled into the car park and went, well, we're not going to go fishing here. Then we decided to go down to City Beach and fish off the groin. Oh. Yeah, painful. And uh, no groin. Gone. Wow. Car park, half gone. Well, and, and, we and in Fremantle, up, uh, did you yeah. see what happened in Fremantle? No. Um, they put a new seawall in and it went through it. And in under the car park, oh, yeah. and half the car park sank. Yeah, well, that's what happened at Floria and City Beach in Cyclone Albie. Wow. So we spent the rest of the night at the pub. We ditched it. And then the next day, we're like, why did we even want to go fishing that night? I mean, there wouldn't mm. be any fish around, would there, on a night like that anyway? Well, that's true. Well, unless they were in the car park. <laughs> well, my brother, who lives in uh, mm. Mundaring, was sitting in his shed, mm. his man cave, and... Uh, God almighty, bang, crash. And a big, big branch from probably 40 metres up from a tree yeah. came down, smashed his shed to bits, came in, this is where he was sitting, came in this close to him. If it was half a metre, we'd be planning a funeral. It was bad. And that was Sunday night, was it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was And of it course, it's, bad. it's Friday now, and guess what? It's raining again. It really hasn't really stopped all week. No, um, no. And, and where was the, the bridge that was Canal destroyed? Rock. Canal, Canal Rocks, Rocks down, which is down near yeah. Bunbury? Yelling up. Yelling, yelling up. up. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was... Pretty munted. Yeah. It was pretty munted. And you can see the radar as well in that package of um, what's actually happening right now as well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, um, Wiggle, how does he like the weather? It's getting cold. It was five degrees uh, the other night. Oh, and um, he's usually a sleek, as you know, you've yeah. seen him, yeah. sleek, beautiful yeah. looking bird. But when it gets this cold, he puffs himself up mm. and he looks... 
five times bigger than what he actually is. Oh, right. And it's really quite funny because then when it warms up, he just brings his feathers back in again. Oh, so it's insulation. It is. Oh, well, the hot air, terrific. well, his body yeah, yeah. air sort of puffs up and stays yeah. within the feathers and it stops him freezing oh, well. to death. Well, I just had an update as well from Uncle Chris. The blue tits have gone. They've gone. They've flown the nest. Well, there was what only happened? two left in the end. They all got... Something happened yeah, to something them, happened. but we don't know. We don't know. Because he doesn't record with that camera. No, I don't think he does. I think it's just to view it like a remote monitor yeah. thing. But, um, so. yeah, he said uh, this afternoon that they've flown the coop. That was quick. That was good. That was good. So I think they were practicing during the week. Well, at least two or three of them got away. Yeah, yeah. So that, Which is so probably why they had so many babies to begin with, because there's obviously quite a high mortality rate. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was unusual, the number that they had. But, uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll get an update from him next week. I, I don't know mm. if they come back at all, whether they've gone forever now. Mm. Come there, have a couple of babies and run off. You know, mm. Interesting. This sounds like an average suburban motel. You know, this this weather that we have, it, you're right, it is a bit chilly at night. So guess what? I'm going out to buy some new pyjamas. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't worn pyjamas for 27 years. But... Have a look. What I, I'm trying to decide which ones to get. Okay. So I've been going through this to see which ones I'd like. Oh my God! Check <laughs> this out. Send in your suggestions as to which ones I should get. Don't encourage him. <laughs> that was funny. I actually like the Donald Trump one. Um, he needs a bit of a slapping at the moment, doesn't he, with his uh, Twitter rantings of... Uh, that guy's done something like 590,000 tweets during his time, and now he's got the shits with Twitter. He's going to do an executive order to try and stop them. Good luck with that, I reckon. Yeah, it's <clears> like <throat> a little boy not getting his own way. But let's not go into politics. <laughs> um, stuff that... Uh, has been happening, especially with a lot of our friends in the music industry, is everything stopped. Their whole career, everything just stopped. Yeah. Them playing in, in venues. Um, and, and they were left out of all of the packages the government offered to, to help people yeah. make ends meet. And it was yeah. like, are our musicians and our artists not important enough? Well, there's a lot of issues, isn't there, Phil? I mean, mm. um, there's a couple of really great people involved in the events industry. Um, and there's, on Facebook, you can find it, there's the Events Industry um, Association. And uh, Tony uh, Williamson is actually the president of it. And he, he put out a release two weeks ago now but, you know, he made some really good points. And I don't think anything has really changed since then as far as the events and the music industry are concerned. Everybody's still waiting. There mm. have been a few things change and we'll, we'll get to that. But there's still no certainty for an awful lot of people. And, and you were saying <clears throat> as well that, um, I mean, I don't know this industry very well, but you were saying how bands used to get, was it called a guarantee? 
They'd get a retainer or in, in and the bigger clubs shows you'd are, get a are saying no. Yeah. You'd get a retainer like, or you'd get um, no. some kind of guarantee or so so much so that you could plan an event. Mm. Um, and uh, clubs on the East Coast in particular, you know, some of the bigger ones like the RSL clubs, they are now going, well, you take the risk. You can have the door charge, whatever, minus fees and, uh, and stuff like that. But if you've got to take eight or nine people um, up the coast and put on mm. a show, how do you fund that? You know, so it's hardly it's, worth it, your it's, while. It, it's going to take some while for this. One of the I mean, gone that, are the days when you guys would go from from Albany to Broome mm. within two days to do gigs. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, why would you even bother in this day and age? Yeah, yeah. I, I think while there is some hope, there's still a lot of things that need to be sorted out, and in the meantime. A lot of people haven't had JobKeeper because they're mm. self-employed. Mm. Um, they might have got the job seeker allowance, but they might have had to fight for that. And it certainly, in most cases, wouldn't replace the majority of their income. Mm. But like Tony points out, he said, the events industry was the first industry to shut down, and that was Friday, March 13th. Mm. It's probably going to be one of the last industries that gets back to some kind of, of normality. Yeah. And that could be months. Mm. Many, many months. Yes, some venues are You're not going to get 600 people in a venue you won't be for to. quite a while. So the economics of everything is going to be really hard to see how it goes. Mm. And, um, you know, as yet, while there are some dates where they can open with restricted crowds, many of the venues may still look at it and go, well, we'll open for food and meals and, and things like that, but we can't afford to put a show on. We can't afford to put a band in. Um, some of the smaller places may have duos or solo acts or something like that, but full shows, it still may be some time before they're economically viable. And they'd want to make sure their meals are pretty good. <coughs> yeah. To get yeah. people in if that's yeah. all they're offering. Yeah. Um, so I'd recommend that a lot of people, that if you're involved in any kind of events, um, mm. you go and have a look at Events Industry uh, Association What's on the Facebook. Website? Well, it, it's, Facebook? they're on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Um, or uh, eia.com.au would be the, I, I think there's a, we a separate website there as well. But go and have a look at that. Um, <clears throat> following up from that, you know, earlier today, they have brought in the phase three um, of easing of restrictions and things like that. And, th and that's effective from tomorrow week. So from Saturday, June the 6th. Um, Which is crazy because it's WA Day Monday. Yeah. It's well, a long weekend well, I, in Western I, I think Australia. the problem is that you wouldn't have time to organise staff <laughs> mm. um, and things like that. You can't find out that's the day true. before and organise that kind of thing. It's, it's just not practical at all. True. And they've obviously had to, you know, they brought it forward from what they said they were going to do, but mm. they've still had to meet kind of middle ground. Mm. So according to the government release now, one of the critical things is that they've reduced the capacity rule so that it's now one person every two square metres as opposed to one every four square metres. Okay. So that enables them to legally get more people in a venue. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the indoor and outdoor venues with multiple spaces or divided spaces mm. can have up to 300 people. That's uh, wow. 100 people per uh, area. So a place like the Camfield, big place near uh, Optus, they theoretically could have 300 people in there because they can divide it into three separate zones, which is, which is a, a, a good thing. Um, they were saying that with some of the bigger RSL clubs and leagues mm. clubs in um, on the east coast, that they some of them are absolutely huge. And, oh yeah, and so they have the yeah. space to do this. Yeah. but Perth, being a big country town yeah. city, yeah. the venues aren't always that big. No, and they they may have separate areas anyway, like a restaurant outside of the main room. So you might have a band in. Uh, I'm thinking like the Charles Hotel. You might have the band in one room. Mm. You can only put 100 people in there. And then the restaurants are in the other part of the building, so you could have, theoretically, 100 in each of those. Um, it doesn't really help the economics of putting in a band in the, in the room. Mm. The other thing that I know you'll love, 
um, beauty therapy and care services. Oh, back to that. God, so you can get that. your roots done. Oh, I was you can thinking of my hair transplant. Done. You can <laughs> your eyebrows trimmed. I do my own now. <laughs> yeah, I found this. Uh, I had to. I was looking like my dad. <laughs> and so I, I got this $15 Remington beard shaver that does eyebrows. Good stuff. Yeah, it's good, good. Good idea. Yeah. It saves having Wiggle do it for you. I mean, like it He would. He would a, sit on my yeah. shoulder and pluck. He's a little plucker. <laughs> plucker duck. <laughs> um, playgrounds, skate parks, outdoor uh, gym equipment. Oh, okay. Go for it. So tomorrow when we go for our walk, no problem. When are gyms opening? Because um, we really need to Well, now what they've said is gyms back. with staff and fitness classes. Yep, they're back from the 6th. Okay. Uh, contact sports and training. So our boxing classes, we can go back to that. Excellent. I missed those. Um, galleries, museums, zoos, theatres, cinemas, concert venues, arcades and amusement parks. Okay. So theoretically, they're all up. Um, restaurants, cafes, bars, pubs, and uh, can now serve alcohol without a meal. Cool. So Which we is can terrific. Just pop in for so, a drink. Yeah. Um, so things are that's starting something positive, to get isn't back it? To I, I guess really the only thing that I see is a: do people want to go out? <laughs> um, there's been a massive change in people's psyche. Mm. Um, so some people may still be very happy to stay at home. Mm. Uh, B, can they afford to go out? Um, because a lot of people have lost a lot of money over the last few months and mm. may not be in a position to do it, or their mm. priorities might be somewhere else. Mm. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And, and some of the venues may still look at it and go, well, 100 people in the room, it's still not economical because we've got to put more staff on. We've mm. got to have security on the doors. We've got to do all these kind of things. And it a friend of mine owns a, a pub in the hills, and she yeah. was saying that, you know, she can't afford on a Sunday to pay a 15-year-old dishwasher $50 an hour when the restaurant's only taken 25 Yeah, It's just not yeah. business viable. Hopefully now, with these easings, the economy starts its uh, mm. merry way back up um, back up the hill. Let's see and how it goes. what about know. our dance lessons? Well, back? there's a couple of places that I think we should go and Great. You know, practice our tango. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, I'll have to go and polish my shoes. I need to iron my tights <laughs> and my leotard. <laughs> so, anyway. uh, yeah, so things are looking up, Phil. Good. Good stuff, isn't it? A uh, bit like this next thing we've got happening here. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> Made my eyes water. Um, so who we got next? Next, we have our best mate, Al Pithers, has joined us again. Um, All the way from Germany? No, no, no they won't let him in Germany at the no, moment because no. of the lockdown and everything. And so he's stuck here. Still? And so, well, he hasn't been locked in the studio. We've actually let him go home from right. last week. right. Um, but he's come back, silly man, and um, he's got a really good song for us again. And uh, Al, take it away. Take it away, Al. Okay, I'm here, all right? Yeah, it's looking gorgeous. Okay, here we go. I can hear a heartbeat from a thousand miles Hear the heavens opening every time that woman smiles Oh man, I come home to her It's where I belong I run into her like a river strong She gives me love, love, love Crazy love, man Love, 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 crazy. 
his love He's got a fine sense of humor when I'm feeling low down I come home to her when the sun goes down She takes away my troubles She takes away my grief Takes away my heartache in the night like a thief She gives me love, love, love Crazy love Love, love, love Crazy love I need her in the daytime I need her in the night Throw my arms all around her Kiss and hug and hold that girl tight me Oh yeah, right, right, right. Turning from so far away, she gives me sweet, sweet loving to brighten up my day. She makes me righteous, she makes me whole. That girl makes me my low, right down to my soul. She gives me love, 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 crazy love, 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 love. Crazy love, man. Love, love, love. She gives me crazy love. Love, love, love. She gives me crazy love. In the morning. In the kitchen On the table Crazy love Everybody's here Bit of a prank on our browser, Russ. Yep. Oh, look at that. Basically, ideas. We're plumbing his whole house with beer. <laughs> this guy's going to come home and it's going to get awesome. See on there? Oh, <laughs> I don't think he's dusted under there for months. <laughs> camera. Little camera in there. We've got a shoe cam down here. Yeah, just a pretty, right, pretty simple setup. <sighs> <laughs> oh, it's like cold beer too, look. He's got his bathroom. No way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> got no fresh water anywhere. Here come the old boys. He's filming it all on his phone. It actually tastes really good. This is like ten kegs of beer under this mug. So happy birthday, huh? Oh, thanks, Jim. Yeah. So, um, how, how are you enjoying that uh, wine and cheese show, the cheese and wine show? Oh, it's not bad, mate. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. The money's good. <laughs> yeah, for my, you know, for my liking, it's too much cheese and not enough wine. Oh, I totally agree with you. You know, I, I, I just think the guys are too nice. You oh, know? absolutely. And um, you know, Mark with his bedroom voice and his, his bloody Betty Davis eyes, you know, and Phil, 
you know, well, he's got a bit of mongrel, but he's more like a puppy that's fucking discovered something interesting behind his balls and can't wait to get a lick at it, you know. So, you know, I remember 40-something years ago we were at the movies and, and it was my, um, my favourite movie. It was a historical documentary drama thing. And uh, Night of the Festering Arseholes. Oh, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, I know, you're with me. I didn't like uh, it, Jim. Oh, no! And that, I asked you what you didn't like about it, and you said... Oh, I, I just don't like movies with scripts. I like there to be, you know, like a room, buckets of blood. No, it's simple, you know. That's right, scripts, no script. No script, yeah. Buckets of blood. Buckets of blood, it's a Now, that's simple. been the blueprint for my life for the last 40 years. Is that right, mate? Yeah, and, yeah, thanks for fucking up my life for me, mate. Oh, you're welcome, mate. But I... <laughs> I, I thought, you know, like... There must be an outlet. There must be an outlet on that show for four minutes or so of, of people just spilling their guts because, you know, I've got some gripes. Oh, I do I'm, have gripes. I'm sure you have, Jim. And, I mean... You know where gripes comes from, don't you? You know, like yeah, is that where the baby gets it? No. Oh. Way back in the ancient days, when when nutrition and you know people were on long trips of discovery in boats and all that sort of stuff, yeah. And the food was shit, and the, you know the sanitary conditions were shit. Mm, well, people like used place. to used to get stomach complaints, and they'd start swelling up until you know you you look out on the deck, and there's all these big bellies there. And people will be going off like bloody popcorn in a frying pan. Oh, fantastic. Oh, you know, like bullshit. And so, um, you know, not to mention bells. Were they voiding? They were voiding. Involuntarily? Well, yeah. With a soft spluttering? Well, mostly with a with a fierce spluttering motion. Oh, but, okay. You know, eventually you run out of shit. Oh, fuck, you're making me hungry, mate. Oh, I know, well, I'm making myself hungry too. So, I, I, think, I think there's a... You know, later on, gripe became known as something, you know, like shit on your chest, basically, because yeah. uh, you have a gripe with someone, you've got a problem with them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I reckon, have this show called The Gripe, you have a white a white title coming in, and it'll go, The Gripe, you know? Yep. And maybe the sound of someone exploding. I love uh, it. And then, the sound of angels singing. Beautiful. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, no, I think that's going to work, mate. Yeah. Listen, next time you're on TV, yep. can you make sure you do your hair first? Sorry, Jim. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Can't reach the fucking thing. Oh, it must be 60. Well, uh, thanks, Jim Rossiter, I think, for that uh, segment. And I, you know what, Phil? I reckon we should do that as a weekly thing. I think so, totally. Jim Rossiter, his weekly gripe. Jim's gripe. Jim's wine weekly gripe. Cheese. Wine and cheese weekly gripe. I think I'd be a bit scared. You never know what you're going to get should, from Jim. Should we you? do it? We'll do it. Start yeah, yeah. next week? Yeah, we'll let him. That'll we'll be good. We'd look be on forward. it. We'd be on it. <laughs> I look forward to seeing that next week. Thanks to Al Pithers. Thanks to all the contributors this week. Yeah. And uh, I hope Wiggle has a good weekend. Oh, he will. And uh, it's WA Day on Monday, so everybody enjoy being West Australian. And um, be kind to each other, ring each other up, talk to each other. Go now and give each other a hug, because you're allowed to now. Are you? Mm. Really? Mm. Said oh, okay. so. The government oh, said we can. Oh. Cheers to uh, Gary Dunn, who phoned me this week. Did he? And, uh, Did he Albert have trousers on? As far as I know, he's just about to have his dinner, so he would have spilled it in his lap if he hadn't. And oh. I, you know, we'd never hear the end of that. No. Um, cheers to him. Cheers to Al Simpson. I take it we'll be seeing them in the not too distant future. Yeah, hopefully. let's hope so. Hey, we'll get the profile happening again. Oh, we need to do that. Cheers, folks. Thanks, guys. Take care. See ya. Have a good week. See ya. <laughs>